Hello and welcome. My name is Awais and I'm an emergency physician currently based in New South Wales, Australia. I'd like to begin by thanking the ICS community for allowing me to present on this stage. Our systematic review and meta-analysis investigated various short-term urethral catheter removal strategies. Today, I have the pleasure of presenting our abstract for our review, which was published in the Cochin Library in June of this year. I have no affiliations to disclose. Urinary catheterization is a common procedure with around 15 to 25% of patients in hospital receiving a catheter at some point during their care. However, the use of urinary catheters isn't without its risks. Catheter-associated urinary tract infections, or CAUC, is the most common complication and is also one of the most common hospital-acquired infections. Around 20% of hospital-acquired bacteremias arise from the urinary tract and have a mortality of up to 10%. The main objective of our review was to assess the effectiveness of removal strategies for short-term indwelling urethral catheters in adults. We defined short-term as 14 days or less after reviewing the current literature, as well as the guidance from various international groups, such as the American and European Urological Associations. Our focus was primarily on urethral catheters. Our aim was to determine what removal strategies existed, and to also determine the second methods for short-term IUC removal. All Cochrane systematic reviews start with a comprehensive literature search to identify all relevant trials that meet the inclusion criteria. We use the Cochrane and Continent Specialised Register of Databases to carry out our search on the 17th of March. The abstract and full text screening was then performed by two authors before finally agreeing on a list of trials which met our inclusion criteria. Data extraction and risk of bias for each trial was then performed independently, with the data then entered into Revman software to allow for the meta-analysis. Finally, we assess the certainty of evidence using the GRADE approach. Our inclusion criteria were all RCTs and quasi-RCTs, which looked at adults undergoing short-term IUC in any setting. We excluded all studies which were not RCTs, as well as studies which looked at other types of catheterization, such as suprapubic and intermittent catheterization. Catheter interventions addressed by other Cochrane reviews were also excluded. The primary outcome for our review was the number of participants requiring recatheterization. In the field review, we have almost 20 different secondary outcomes, and so only a few have been listed here. Some of our secondary outcomes included complications associated with catheters, time to first void, and length of hospitalization. As previously mentioned, we used the GRADE approach to assess the certainty of the body of evidence. We chose the following four outcomes to be represented in our summary of findings table, as they were deemed to be the most clinically relevant from a patient's perspective. These outcomes were the number of participants requiring recatheterization, symptomatic cauti, dysuria, and other generic quality of life measures. Please refer to the summary of findings table included with our abstract for more details. Due to time constraints, I will only be able to focus on the results of our grade outcome measures for this presentation. We screened 1,583 records in total. We included 99 RCTs and quasi-RCTs involving 12,241 participants. The majority of participants underwent some form of surgical procedure. There were no trials identified which reported data on quality of life. Here we have our Prisma flow diagram which highlights the identification and selection for both our included and excluded studies. During the risk of bias assessment, we found that the majority of trials were deemed to be at low or unclear risk of selection bias. Most of the trials were deemed to be at low risk of attrition and reporting bias. Given the nature of our intervention, the blending of participants and personnel was not always possible. The four main removal strategies identified were number one, the removal of IUC at midnight versus early the next day game morning, number two, shorter durations of IUC versus longer durations of IUC, number three, clamping regimes before IUC removal versus free drainage, and number four, the use of alpha blockers before IUC removal versus no intervention or placebo. For our first comparison, which looked at the removal of catheters at midnight as opposed to early the next again morning, we identified 13 trials involving 1,506 participants. The removal of the IEC at midnight was shown to reduce the risk of requiring recatheterization compared to early the next again morning. Regarding symptomatic cauti, there was insufficient evidence to suggest there was any benefit from removing the catheter at any particular time of day. Likewise, we are uncertain if the removal of catheters at midnight has any effect on dysuria with one trial only reporting this outcome. For our second comparison, which looked at shorter versus longer durations of IUC, we identified 68 trials involving over 9,000 participants. Shorter durations of catheterization may increase the risk of requiring recatheterization when compared to longer durations, 
There is moderate surgery evidence to suggest that shorter durations of IUC reduces the risk of symptomatic cauti. Shorter durations of IUC were also shown to reduce the risk of dysuria. This figure demonstrates the meta-analysis for the number of participants requiring recatheterization for this comparison and has been uploaded with our abstract. Moving on to our third comparison, which looked at clamping the IEC before removal versus free drainage, there were seven trials involving 714 participants. There was little to no difference between clamping and free drainage in terms of the risk of requiring recatheterization, the number of participants developing symptomatic cauti, or the number of participants developing dysuria. Moving on to our final comparison, looking at the use of alpha blockers versus placebo before IUC removal, we identified three trials involving 402 participants. We found that there was insufficient evidence to suggest alpha blockers had any effect on the number of participants requiring recatheterization, the number of participants developing symptomatic cauti, or the risk of dysuria. So in summary, there is some evidence to suggest that removal of indwelling urethral catheters late at night rather than early in the morning may reduce the number of people requiring recatheterization. Catheter removal after shorter compared to longer durations reduces the risk of symptomatic cauti and may reduce the risk of dysuria. However, it may lead to more people requiring recatheterization. Current evidence remains uncertain about the effects of clamping catheters or the use of alpha blockers. This review has highlighted the need for a standardized set of core outcomes which should be measured by future clinical trials researching this area. In doing so, systematic reviewers will have more scope for the meaningful synthesis of the evidence and would also lead to more robust clinical recommendations made by guideline panels. More research in non-surgical patients is also needed. I want to thank you all for your time and I look forward to any questions that you may have.